Bug Out Moto. You are watching my Bug Out Van Build Series. Hey, be sure to check out my Bug Out Van Build Series. Video links are in the description section of this video. Here's an unboxing of my 155 amp hour deep cycle dry cell AGM batteries. And these are some heavy batteries, guys. I bought two of them. And they weigh about 100 pounds each. So when they drop ship it at your door, be careful lifting them because they are super heavy. But if you're looking for an awesome solar battery, this is it, guys. Completely maintenance free, dry cell. You don't have to worry about any gases, any uh, maintenance of liquids, or anything, guys. Just put them in a, a battery box, put them in your vehicle, and you don't have to worry about them. Okay, now I'm going to build a battery box for my two batteries. And I'm just going to use the scrap wood that I have left over from the bed. And uh, just a simple battery box, and I'll use hinges for the uh, so you can open and close the top. I uh, bought a bunch of uh, different wood screws there and some wood glue. So basically just wood glue the pieces together and then uh, uh, drill and screw it together. And you come up with a box that looks like this. And here is the battery box completed. Complete with speaker box carpet on the inside and outside. And of course a lock latch. And it fits absolutely perfect in that midsection of the van as you see there. I will be installing the battery charger, solar controller, and 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter on the lid of the battery box with the wires going down into the battery box for a clean look. By the way, links to those items are in the info section of this video. And finally, the, the unboxing of my 100 watt bendable solar panels, which I bought four of them for a 400 watt solar system. And the main reasons I went with the bendable panels over the regular panels is because I want to keep my bug out van looking stealth. I want it to look like a work van and not look like an RV. So that way I can park this van anywhere and it will not stand out as a vehicle that can be lived in. Uh, also, another big reason that these panels are really lightweight, only four to five pounds in weight each. And also they're very thin and bendable so they will flex over the roof of my van and create very little wind drag so I won't incur reduced fuel efficiency. And also from what I hear, these panels actually will produce a little more energy than the regular panels. I put this panel on the shipping scale and it's exactly four pounds and 12 ounces. I'm going to start this video out by listing all the parts I use for this solar install and as we go through the video it'll start to make more sense to you at least for those of you who are new at this like I was. We'll start it off I purchased a 40 amp MPPT solar controller I was told to get this premium solar controller which costs over $100 more than the PWM solar controller because this MPPT solar controller will extract the most amount of power out of your solar panels. So really it doesn't pay to go cheap here if you want to get the maximum power out of your panels. Uh, I decided to wire these panels in parallel over series because from my understanding if you wire it in series and you get shading on one panel it makes the other panels ineffective thus reducing your total power output of your solar panels. The first step I did was set up the cables in the house and I used zip ties to reduce the bulk from the extension cables. To make this wiring process more simple and less confusing, I did the negatives first and then the positives. And this is the end result, one for the negative and another one that looks just like this for the positive. Next step, I went ahead and took some rubbing alcohol and cleaned the roof of the van to prepare it for the adhesive. And I went ahead and cleaned the back of the solar panels with rubbing alcohol as well. Next up, I went ahead and put heavy duty adhesive on the back of the panel and I went ahead and installed it on the roof. This is the hardest part of the process because as soon as you put that panel down, it sticks like hell and you can't make any adjustments. So the first time you have to do it right. And as you see there, it's on rock solid. However, the drawback with using adhesive is these panels are on permanent. And if I go to try to remove those panels, it's probably going to break the panel. Okay, here's all four panels installed. I left plastic on the last one to show you that each one is wrapped in plastic. However, I noticed that when I removed the plastic, one of the panels had a mark on there, which I was kind of pissed off. And the other one had some scratches. So if you buy these type of panels, make sure to remove the plastic as soon as you get them. If you see any imperfections, have the company replace them. Next up, I used white Gorilla Tape to seal the edges to prevent wind and air from getting underneath the panels. And I tell you, this Gorilla Tape is really strong and it's also weatherproof as well. I even put an extra strip at the front edge to make sure that nothing gets underneath there. And I also went ahead and put tape over the eyelets. 
Okay, here's the mess I'm also going to have to clean up, but until then, we're going to go ahead and do the wiring inside the van. What's cool about this Chevy Express van is all you have to do is remove those bolts there and those plastic pieces. You can run the wires through there, and there's an opening to the inside of the van there. There's a rubber boot that I had to remove, and that'll give me access to inside the van. As you see, that wire runs down very easily, goes right through that hole, and then I made a rubber boot to seal it. I started with the negative wire first, by the way. Then I just took the wire from the inside there and ran it up along the back corner into the rib section. And then down that middle rib that goes down to the battery box where the solar controller is sitting on top of. Then just go ahead and feed the negative wire in and screw it down. Next, I went ahead and wired the battery to the solar controller, put the negative in first and then the positive. And then I went ahead and brought down the positive wire from the solar panels and connected it to the solar controller, just as I just showed you. Hey folks, I just want to give you an update on my solar setup. I did decide to remove all that hideous tape and excessive cabling, sent the cables back to Amazon for a full refund, and decided to do my own custom cabling setup. And I'll show you how you can save a ton of money and also have a much more effective setup than I had before. First off, let me explain the cons to purchasing cables from the same manufacturer as the solar panels. Okay, you need two types of cables for a parallel connection. You need extender cables and you need the two cables that connect to the solar controller. And you also need branch connectors. Okay, when you purchase cables from the manufacturer, they only have certain sizes, which really sucks. And that's the huge con to it all. Because uh, for the extender cables, they only had 1.5 feet and 5 feet. And I was between those two sizes and 1.5 feet wasn't enough and 5 feet was way too much. As you see here in this picture, I had to zip tie the excessive amount of cable there, you know, which not only creates bulk, but it also reduces the uh, power efficiency that I would extract from the solar panels. So that's why I decided to do a custom setup, which is way cheaper and I'll get a much better efficient power output and less bulk on the roof of my van. For those of you who are not familiar with a parallel connection, basically you're just connecting the positive from each solar panel and the negative from each solar panel and creating just one positive and one negative connection that will lead to the solar controller. Before I wire the solar panels, I'll need to reconnect the solar controller to my batteries. I made a mistake the first time by connecting the solar controller to only one battery when I should have connected the positive wire to one battery and the negative to the other battery so that both batteries get charged equally. Next, I went to Home Depot and I purchased 45 feet of 8 gauge stranded THHN wire in the color of white and it was 49 cents a foot and it only cost me $22 and change with tax. Some people say don't use a THHN wire for automotive use because it's too stiff. But actually it works perfect for my application because on the roof of my van I don't want the wire to move around. So it works out perfect for my setup. Next I purchased 5 sets of MC4 connectors for less than $7 on Amazon. Next, I purchased even better branch connectors than the Renogy ones that I used previously. These are actually even a little smaller than the Renogy ones and cheaper. Less than $10 a pair and I bought three pairs. Now to connect the connectors to the wires. It comes with two silver connectors that you see there for each one. And for the positive one, you want to use the longer silver piece and the shorter silver piece for the negative connection. Very simple installation, just strip the end of the wire, slide that connector on, crimp it, and then remove the bottom piece of the connector and put that over the wire and then just slip the silver piece into the connector until it snaps and then just screw the bottom piece up and it'll make a tight connection as you see there. Okay, and here's the final result after making all of my custom cables and connecting to the branch connectors and I use zip ties to tidy everything up. As you can see there, it looks much cleaner than my previous setup, and I put power grip pedal tape underneath the branch connector setup so they're on real strong and tight and they won't move in the wind. And uh, here is the connectors that go to the solar controller, as you can see, much shorter cable length. That green light for the solar panel means it's working, and the battery green light is flashing, meaning the batteries are full, 13.6 volts. As you see there, all good. And today was actually overcast. Fully recharged my batteries. Awesome.
Hey folks, as always, links to all items shown in this video are located in the description and comment section of this video. So hey, go get you some solar panels and get you some free energy, dude. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Welcome to my click to go links. Just click on a picture below to go.